Uh, okay, good morning. So, there is one part which I was not able to complete from the last lesson, so I just today I will complete that part. It will not be that long, and then you are able to practice on your own. So, if you remember, we talked about the complex plane, and I told you that if you have a complex number, which contains usually a real part and an imaginary part, you can view this as you can view this as a point uh, in the complex plane. And what is complex plane is actually a fancy name that we give to the same coordinate system, but we just change the name of the x-axis to the axis which is called the real axis and the imaginary axis. So that's it. And then the origin is the same and the uh, axes are perpendicular. So this means that if I want to visualize z rather than visual, I don't know, having an abstract notion in my head, I can visualize it by a point, yes? And then, for example, I would say that if this is A and this is B, then the point whose coordinates are actually A and B denotes a point here. And then we discussed a little bit about uh, that. We also uh, introduced the notion of absolute value of a complex number. And I told you that absolute value of a complex number is the real part squared it's imaginary part squared added and taking the square root. This will actually modify the absolute value uh, of the real numbers. Uh, but so I, I mean that it will enjoy the same properties. We discussed about that one as well. Yes, do you remember? Yeah. We had some properties z times z bar is absolute value of z squared. But of course, you cannot expect this in real numbers because the notion of z bar only makes sense if you are working with complex numbers. But if you remember, for example, absolute value of z times w. Even in the real, so it is equal to absolute value of z times absolute value of w. And that was the same property that you had when you were working with real numbers. And the absolute value of z over w is supposed is equal to absolute value of z over absolute value of w. Here w is not zero. And then I emphasize that be careful that absolute value of z plus d plus w, if you want to find to push this analogy further, this will not work. That's not correct. And then what is the geometrical interpretation of absolute value of a complex number? That was the distance from the point on the complex plane to the origin. So this one is absolute value of C. Yes? And um, what was very important uh, is this. We also talked about an important thing. If I give you two complex numbers, z and w, and if you subtract them, it becomes a new complex number. And if you take the absolute value of this one, do you remember what was the geometrical interpretation of this absolute value? Yes? The distance between these two points considered to be points on the complex plane. So if I give you, if I give you this point wherever it is, and give you that point wherever it is, if you join these two points and measure this distance, this becomes absolute value of z minus w, or of course absolute value of w minus c. Doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. But it, I also, if I remember correctly, I also talked about this scenario. So what happens if I have a positive sign in between? So what was the interpretation of that one? So I have to put this negative negative. So this becomes absolute value of z negative negative w. But then it means that this measures the distance between this number and that number. So if I ask you what is this, so you would say that I will go and find z somewhere and I go and find minus w somewhere, this measures the distance between these two. Yes. So this is, uh, let me make it a little bit more careful here. So if this is z and this is minus w, I have this far away so I cannot draw it. So, so let us take this minus w. So this, uh, I want to, here. So let me take, let me keep minus w here, and let me take z here. Yes. 
So if I ask you, what is the geometric interpretation of this, you would say that I can interpret it in this way, and then I will specify the point Z on the plane and the point minus W on the plane, wherever it is, and then I measure this distance. This distance is equal to absolute value of Z plus W. Yes. And now, uh, but of course you can interpret it in a different way. You can interpret this as W minus minus Z. If I interpret this in that way, what is the meaning? It becomes the distance between W and minus Z. So where is W, by the way? If minus W is here, can you tell me where is W? Because you see what I'm saying, this was, I, I just talked about this part, and now I am talking about this part in this lesson as well. I'm just telling you that you can interpret this in two ways, as we did here. I can interpret it in this form or in that form. If I interpret it with a minus sign for W, then I have that picture. If I interpret it in this way, uh, I need to locate W. But if minus W is there, can you tell me how should I, should I locate W? Image. No, not mirror image. That is W bar. Mm. Yes, where should I? So, see, if I ask you multiply Z by negative sign, you have to multiply this by negative sign and this by negative sign. So it means that both X and Y coordinates become negative. So they will be reflected through the origin. Yes, so it means that if I ask you where W is, so you have to uh, you have to connect this point uh, to this and then continue it exactly here so if this is minus w this is definitely w yes and now if i ask you where minus z is you do the same thing yes you connect this one to this one and then continue it here so this point is minus z and if I con connect these two points, this can be interpreted as Z plus W again. But that's not surprised because these two triangles are congruent, yes? This length is equal to that length, this length is equal to that length, and this angle is equal to that angle. So these two triangles are completely con they are congruent, so it means that this length is exactly the same length here, yes? Okay, and so far, so good, okay? And uh, I remember, I, from here, I also concluded something about powers. I told that if you have z and then raise it to some power and then take absolute value, it doesn't matter if you take absolute value first and then raise it to power n. And that was extremely important property, yes? I just want to give you some examples and then uh, we are done, okay? There might be, I also add one thing to the thing. So, can you tell me, in the complex plane, let me write this example. This example is important. Uh, in the complex plane, specify all the points Z that satisfy the following given relation, the following relation. So I want you to understand what is going on. So absolute value of Z minus 2 is equal to 3. So you should have a good feeling about this equation. So without any calculation in principle, you should be able to answer the question for the first part. So what should we say? Of course, I will teach you how to calculate because sometimes the equation is complicated. We cannot interpret it geometrically that well. But then you should be able to solve it in some way.
Can you imagine? So if I draw a complex plane for you, a real part, imaginary part, and I am asking you, for example, for example, do you think this point Z? I don't know. I'm just imagining this is far away. Do you think this Z will satisfy this equation? Or I mean that which points will satisfy this equation? I want to find all possible points Z that satisfy this equation without calculation, of course. I want you to understand. Of course, I will teach you how to calculate as well. Uh, I just told you, how do you interpret this? What is what is uh, absolute? What does absolute value of z minus two measure? It measures the distance between z and two. Yes, yes or no? So where is two? Two is here. So it measures z minus two absolute value measures the distance between z and two. But I am telling you that I want this distance to be 3. So it means that, for example, if this length is larger than 3, it's not acceptable. If it is smaller than 3, it's not acceptable. I'm just looking for those z's so that it's their distance to this point 2 is exactly 3 units. So what is that? What shape you should imagine? Circle? A circle centered at no centered at two with radius equal to three. Yes, that's it. So this means that I put the needle of the compass here and open it three units, which is of course this becomes a little bit hard for me to draw it precisely. This is two units. I have to do one unit here. So the circle will pass through here. Uh, let me just try to be a little bit more careful. So this is one, two, three. That would be also a point. And then I go three units to the right. I don't know. Three, four, and five. And three units up. One, two, three. Something like that. Of course, I would not be able to draw it good in a good way, but this means that this is the circle. Yes. So all these red colors that you see are all possible points for the z that I was looking for. Is that clear? Because, you see, I didn't do any calculations. I just started with the geometrical interpretation of absolute value of difference of two complex numbers. So I have to interpret this as the distance between z and 2. This tells me that the distance between z and 2 is supposed to be 3. And this means that it's a circle center that 2 with radius 3, yes? So if you want, it's better to, in the exam, just write this is minus 1. How much is this? It's minus 3. How much is 5? And this is also 3. You don't need to be more precise than that. But if I want to calculate this, if sometimes this is not easy to understand it geometrically, you should be also be able to do it algebraically. But then I need to remind you a little bit, I don't know how many of you have studied uh, the circle equation in math 3 c but let me just remind you a little bit, okay? So that is just, I would call it a recap, yes? So if this is not related to complex numbers at all. So if I give you a normal coordinate system, x and y, and then I give you a point with coordinates alpha and beta, for example, I call it center alpha and beta and i give you a number r to be the radius of my circle and i draw a circle with the radius r yes yeah, something like that so let me just make it a little bit so here i have the center point the center i give you the coordinates alpha and beta i give you alpha i give you beta i also give you the radius and then I want you to find an equation for this circle which is centered at C and its radius is equal to R. A 
Okay, what should I do? I would say that, okay, when I want to find an equation of any shape, it means that I take a representative point on that shape and try to use the geometrical properties of the shape to find the connection between the coordinates. Whenever I want to find an equation for a shape, that's the meaning. So I take the representative point, I call it x and y, and I will try to use the geometric, the geometric property of the circle to connect, to relate x and y together. But that is very simple, because if this point is on the circle, uh, let me call it point M, the distance from M to C should be the radius. So CM is definitely equal to the radius. But in Mach 2C, you learn how to find the distance between two points uh, when the coordinates are given. So the coordinates, I chose them to be X and Y, but the coordinates of C was already given, were already given. So this means that I write the distance formula. The difference between x coordinates squared plus the difference between y coordinates squared is equal to r. But usually people get rid of the square root sign by raising it to power 2. So this becomes x minus alpha squared plus y minus beta squared is equal to r squared. This is one of the famous equations in, uh, in mathematics. So whenever you see an equation of this form, you need to understand immediately that this represents a circle. For example, if I give you this equation, you immediately realize that this represents a straight line. So this is the standard form of a straight line. That's the standard form of the equation of a circle. So you need to know alpha and beta are the coordinates of the center, and this r is the radius. But what appears is r squared. Yes? For example, if I ask you, what is the shape which is represented by this? What is the shape represented by this equation? Is it a circle or not? Yes. Hmm. Yes. So when you say it is a circle, you need to be able to write it in this standard form. So what number is playing the role alpha? What Zero. number is playing the beta? beta? Five. Not five. Minus. minus five. And what number plays the role of the radius? Three. Not three. Square root of three. A square root of three. Yes, R squared appears here. So if I say that you need to write it in this form in your head, because you want to keep it ex exactly as a standard form. Yes? So in principle, you have to write something like this in your head and then try to read the numbers. So the coordinate of the center the coordinates of the center is 0 and negative 5, and the radius is square root of 3. Yes. Uh, is that clear? Okay, so now we can go back and solve this problem algebraically, which I don't uh, prefer. In this one, it was so simple, uh, understanding geometrically was easier. Okay? But in case, if you cannot realize what to do, you can solve this algebraically. How? So let me clean this part. If I want to solve this algebraically, I would say that, okay, let, let z that I am looking for is x plus y r. Okay, then... What do I need in the equation? I need z minus 2. Then, a z minus 2 becomes equal to x minus 2 plus yi. Yes? I start, so this is always the case. Whenever you want to do these problems algebraically, you will start with something like this. Let z be x plus yi. And then try to construct what you need in the equation. In the equation, I need z minus 2, so I subtract 2 from both sides, but 2 is real, so I subtract it from the real part. And then, absolute value, what happens for the absolute value of z minus 2? Absolute value of a complex number is the square root of its real part squared plus its imaginary part squared. Yes? That is the absolute value of z minus 2. Okay, so therefore, what can I write? When you say z minus 2 equals to 3, 
algebraically means square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared is 3. Yes? But then I raise both sides to power 2. It becomes x minus 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And hopefully, if you realize what I said there, we can immediately realize that's also a circle. Yes? Because it can be written in the standard form. Okay, can you tell me what is the center? And what is the radius? Minus 2. 2 and? 0. 0. And what is the radius? 3. 3. Okay, that was exactly what we predicted without calculations, yes? We realized that the points... The points lie on a circle whose center is here, which is exactly 2 and 0, and the radius there was 3, yes? So that's algebraic way of doing it. I want you to learn both of them, but give priority to the geometric interpretation if possible. Yes? Sometimes you need to know more geometry to be able to do that. If your geometry is good, probably it is easier to guess what's happening, yes? Any questions? Okay, let us go to the next example. Um, okay, I can add something here and I can see what you say. So number two, I would write absolute value of z plus 2i is less than or equal to 2. So what is your guess based on geometrical calculations? Uh, so let me clear this. So when I have the absolute with the negative sign, this is the most standard way of interpreting it with the, as a distance. But this, I told you that this also can be viewed as a distance. But distance between which points? Z and? Minus 2i. Yes, because I told you that for interpreting absolute value as a distance, you have to have a negative sign between the numbers, yes? So what you do first, you just change the form. Uh, you can say that, okay, absolute value of z plus 2i can be viewed equivalently as z minus minus 2i, yes? And then this means that this is the distance uh, from z to what? To minus 2i. So now can you interpret what is the meaning? It, it, it tells you that you are interested in all those points z so that the distance from those points to this fixed point minus 2i is either 2 or less than 2. So imagine what happens. So, let me just locate these points clearly. Uh, where is minus 2i? Minus 2i is here. Yes? And then I want the points on this plane so that the distance from those points to this point is either equal to 2 or less than 2. So where, what happens? Yes, circle and whatever is inside that circle. What With center at where? At minus 2i and radius equals to 2. Yeah, so I put the needle of the compass here and then I open the two units and I draw a circle, yes? Okay, so something like that. But if you just finish here, it's not complete. 
because what I have done is just the points whose distance to this point is exactly equal to 2. Of course, 2 is acceptable, but I will also have less than 2. So this point is also acceptable, this point is also acceptable because the distances are smaller than 2. So it means that you have to convince the person who's correcting your paper that you know what's going on, yes? This means that somehow this can. Now tell me, if I give you the same thing, but I have written this one for you, how do you convince me somehow? Or you can explain in words, but... Yeah. So if I have given you this instead of that, what, what is the difference then? Yeah, we will write these in, in the form of dotted lines, yes? So it means that I am excluding. Now let me ask you one question. How, what do you think about this one now? If I ask you to represent this for me, what is that? Yeah? Insert, yeah. So it means that you have to, I don't know, that's probably harder, but at least, that's the email here. So you need to tell me that the distance to this should be 2, so this rim is acceptable, but everything outside is also acceptable. So you need to somehow convince or explain in words that everything outside that is acceptable. Is that clear? Okay, let me ask you another question. Number three. These are technical problems, so, but the idea is this. So let me write number three. What happens if I have two uh, z uh, plus two plus four i is less than, uh, let us make it three, okay. Okay, I want you to do it geometrically, intuition, uh, yeah, by, based on intuition. So, how, what should I do first? So let me clean this. Can you interpret this as some kind of distance? Distance between what? Every absolute value can be interpreted as distance, that is for sure. But if you want to interpret it as distance right away, that is the distance between which points? Can you tell me? Two Z and? Yeah, so you interpret it in this way. You interpret it in that way, and you say, you say that this is the distance between 2z and that one. That's correct. But it is not helpful in this context, because I am not looking for 2z's on the plane. I'm looking for z's on the plane. So if you want to do it effectively, you have to have the coefficient of z equal to 1. It is not wrong to say this is the distance between 2z and that one, but then every time, you are, because you are going to find z's on the plane, not 2z's on the plane, yes? So this means that even though that is completely correct, but because the coefficient is something else, that's not good. So what do I do? I have to get rid of these two. But can I divide by 2 everything? I want you to understand that one as well. So can I... So because we learned that, if I have 2z, I can write it as absolute value of 2, absolute value of z. We just learned that. And absolute value of t is just, absolute value of 2 is just 2. So this means that if I divide this by 2, I can divide this by 2, I can divide this by 2, it becomes absolute value of z. So it is possible to divide by a constant number, yes? So this means that, okay, I divide everything by 2 first, it becomes z plus 1 plus 2i, and then of course I have to divide the other side by 2 as well, but then I interpret this as you said, like this, and then I can interpret it as the distance, yes, the distance between this point and that point, so I will draw uh, Complex plane, minus 1 is here, minus 2i is here, 
for example, this would be my point. And then I want all the points whose distance to z is less than 1.5. So it means that I need to put the needle of the compass here, open it three halves, and then do a circle, yes? Something like this. Yeah, it's not a very good picture, but you, you, you understand what I mean. But it should be excluded, and it is inside. So you should say that everything inside, but not the rib, yes? Is that understandable? Yeah. So minus one, minus two i is here. I want to have it. I want to have the distance less than one point five. So I put the needle of the compass here and open it one point five, and then draw a circle. This rib is not acceptable, but everything inside is acceptable. Yes. Because this distance was minus one, when I draw it with three halves, it goes a little bit to the right. Yes. Passes through. Yeah, understandable or not? Yes. Okay. Now let me give you another one and then we can pass on to another problem. So number four, what do you think about these points? This one I will solve it geometrically and algebraically. Here, if your geometry is not that good enough, geometry guess is, is not easy. But Algebraically becomes easy. So let us just do this one as well. So I am concentrating on those points Z that satisfy this equation. So can you see what it what it will be? recording a little bit so that you can okay let us go back to this problem now so what is your guess about the final shape what is the final shape represented by this equation in the complex plane now you can answer a line so how did you come to this conclusion okay so let us so this you interpret this as a distance again Okay, so the distance between z and which point? Don't get confused. Which point? One and minus. Yes, you have to factor a minus sign out. This is, it's a half two. Because you have to have a negative sign between your complex numbers. And this is already a negative sign. So you interpret this as the distance between this point and that point. So I go and draw a complex plane here for you. So the x coordinate is one. The y coordinate is 2. Okay, so, and then what I do, I do the same thing here 3. 1, 2, and 3. Yes, yeah, so this is 3. This point is what? Uh, 1 plus 2i. Okay, now I, I want to hear from you. So these are the points. So this means that I am interested in a point so that the distance from that point to this is equal from, uh, to the distance from that point to this. So for example, let me tell you. So do you believe that this is one of those points? No, because the distance from here to here is much shorter than the distance from here to here. I am looking for those points whose distance from this and that are the same. Okay, now, yes? Obvious choice is the middle, if you draw straight Yeah, the middle one is definitely an obvious one. So it means that if you connect, if you join these two points, the one exactly in the middle is one of those points. Because the distance from this point to that would be equal to the distance from this point to this one. But is this the only one? No. So what are they? So intuitively, so this point is also acceptable, this point is also intuitively, yes? The distance from this to and this are the same. The distance from here to here are the same. So the distance from here to here are the same, yes? So if you consider all of them, it becomes a line. And there is a name for this particular line. What is that? What's that? You studied in geometry, yes? It's called perpendicular bisector. 
of the line safe. Yes? So this is the perpendicular line safe. Yes? So remember this. Whenever you have two points, any points, and I ask you to find all the points on the whiteboard which are equidistant to these two points, you draw the perpendicular bisector of the line. So it means that you find the middle one, middle point, and then you drop you drop a perpendicular line to it. This is A, this is B. This line that you get is called perpen the perpendicular bisector. Because it bisects the line segment and it is perpendicular to that. Bi perpendicular bisector of AB. So definitely this should be unlocked. So this is, we confirm that geometrically. But I want you to also see this ge algebraically. So how can, I, how can I solve this problem algebraically? I told you that for algebraically, you always start with the same sentence. Let z be equals to x plus y i. Okay? And then you start calculating these things individually. So, for example, z minus 1 minus 2i is one of the things that I need. So this becomes x plus y i minus 1. So it becomes x minus 1. They are real parts. Minus 2i becomes y minus 2i. Agree? This would be z minus that number. But then I also have z minus 3 here. It means that this becomes x minus 3 plus y i. But I need absolute value of these. Okay? So I continue one step more. Absolute value of z minus 1 minus 2 i is equal to the square root of this one squared and this one is square. And then here, absolute value of z minus 3 is the square root of this one squared and that one squared. But then I, want, I, I demand that these two distances should be the same. So this means that this square root should be equal to this square root. But this cannot happen if... This can happen only if and only if this one is equal to that one. Yes? So this means that absolute value of z minus 1, 2, i is equal to absolute value of z minus 3 if and only if x minus 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 minus 1, y minus 2 to the power 2 is x minus 3 squared plus y squared. Yes? And then you have to simplify this. You might think that I am facing this, uh, circles. But no, because the squares will be cancelled out. You will be left with first degrees. So this, if I raise it to power 2, it becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1, y squared minus 4y plus 4, and the other side I have x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then I have y squared, yes? This x squared here and that one are cancelled. y squared here and y squared there are also cancelled. Uh, so what you get, let us simplify. If I move minus 6x to the right-hand side, it becomes positive x. I'm oh, sorry, positive 4x. And then I have minus 4y. That's it. And then how many numbers are left? 1 from here, 4 from there, and 9 from there. If I move it to the other side, it becomes 4. Yes? And I divide everything by 4. So this becomes x minus y equals to 1, or if you want, you can write y is equal to x minus 1, as simple as that. So what is left is this, and that is confirmed by this rough picture, yes? Because the slope is 1, and it passes through exactly this point, so that is the line exactly. So this is algebraic way, you see it is not much longer, but geometrically it was easier if you know this geometry of this. Is that clear? Okay. So, uh, this is uh, good, and then let me just give you another problem, uh, and then we are done. So, I told you that absolute value of z uh, 
times W is equal to absolute value of Z times absolute value of W. But I also mentioned, don't uh, push this analogy further than that and try to write this, because that is wrong. Yes? But can you tell me what can I write if I insist to write something here? What can I put here? I cannot put equality. Yes. And by the way, I should convince you that I cannot put equality here. For example, I don't know. For example, let me take z to be just 2, w to be minus 3. And if I ask you what is z plus w, you get minus 1. And if I ask you what is absolute value of w, you will tell me 1. And if I calculate absolute value of z is 2, absolute value of w is 3, but when I add them, it becomes 5, and 1 is not equal to 5. So that, that is just enough to show that equality is not true. But can I put something else? I cannot put equality between them in general. Can you guess two numbers that equality holds? When I say equality, I cannot put equality here. It means that there might be deviations sometimes. It doesn't necessarily mean that always they are not equal. Can you give an example for which this equality holds? It's very simple, yes? I take z to be 1. I take w to be 1 as well, for example. Then this becomes 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. That's working. So sometimes it is equal, sometimes it is not equal. But can I say more than that? Of course you can say, so you cannot put not equality here, because sometimes it works. But what can I write? The answer is this, less than or equal to. Okay, and that is called the triangle inequality. And that is one of the very important inequalities in mathematics. Yes? Why this is called triangle inequality? Because I told you that. Now, of course, this is a little bit... Uh, So you see here, if I give you, if I want to interpret this as the distance, I have to interpret it in this way. We learned that we have to interpret it in this way. So assume that here is z, here is minus w. And if I ask you what is this distance, you will tell me this is the distance, yes? Absolute value of z plus w. But what is the distance, what is absolute value of z? Absolute value of z is the distance from z to the origin. This is absolute value of z. But, do you, in principle, if I ask you what is this length, you will tell me this is absolute value of minus w. But absolute value of minus w and absolute value of w are the same. Yes? So now you see that I have a triangle so that one length is this number, another length is this number, and the last length is this number. And hopefully you know that in a triangle, the sum of the two sides is always larger than the third side. And that is exactly the content of this inequality. So this is why it is called the triangle inequality. But of course, in a real triangle, equality will never hold if you have a real triangle. But you might destroy the triangle by pressing it into a line. So that, by the way, this is also a triangle, but it is called a degenerate triangle. Yes? So I, if I press this one so that it touches this, that is also a triangle. But in that case, the equality will hold. Yes? So in principle, it's not part of the lesson in the book, but I want you to know that if this is not correct, what is the correct version? The correct version is that you have less than or equal to. 
Okay, uh, I think that would be a good point to stop. I will write one exercise and then I will start solving it next time and continue the lesson. So I wanted to prove this absolute value of z plus w squared is absolute value of z squared plus absolute value of w squared plus two times the real part of z times w bar. Okay, so I, I'm giving you z and w, any complex numbers that you like. I want you to prove this identity. Okay, any questions? Okay, I think it is good to stop here. And if you are interested, you can come and visit your grades here.